Hurricane Maria hit Puerto Rico one week ago today. It took six days for the president to say anything of substance about the destruction and chaos that followed the island-wide power outage, food shortages, lack of drinking water, the list goes on. And today, as Donald Trump headed off to Joint Base Andrews, he had this to say about it all. Puerto Rico's a very difficult situation. I mean, that place was just destroyed. That's not a question of, gee, let's dry up the water, let's do this or that. I mean, that place was flat. That is a really tough situation. I feel so badly for the people. Those people, as a reminder, are American citizens, which is a big part of the reason why so many people were wondering why it took the president and the administration so long to address the crisis. The president also talked about why Puerto Rico is important to him. Puerto Rico is very important to me, and Puerto Rico, the people are uh, fantastic people. I grew up in New York, so I know many people from Puerto Rico. And he gave a geography lesson for everyone's benefit. It's very tough because it's an island. In Texas, we can ship the trucks right out there, but the difference is this is an island sitting in the middle of an ocean, and it's a big ocean. It's a very big ocean. Indeed it is, but according to the president, everyone thinks things are going pretty great. The governor has been so incredible in his, in his statements about the job we're doing. We're doing a great job, and uh, we are going to do far more than anybody else would ever be able to do, and we're, it's being recognized as such. As I mentioned, the president is visiting Tuesday, but is the government doing, is our government doing enough to help the island of 3.4 million residents? Here's a view from the ground with the mayor of San Juan speaking to CBS. I know that leaders aren't supposed to cry, and especially not on TV. But we are having a humanitarian crisis. We need to get our together here. And help needs to get into people's hands now, not tomorrow, not later, now. And, and, and the FEMA employees want to do it, but the, the chain of command is just sucking everything up. Joining me to discuss all this are Julio Ricardo Varelles, co-host of the In the Thick political podcast, NPR's Latino USA contributor and founder of LatinoRebels.com. Good to see you. State Representative Jeffrey Sanchez of Boston, as you know, recently appointed chair of the House Ways and Means Committee. He has family in Puerto Rico. Mr. Chairman, good to see you. Gregory Gottlieb is former acting assistant administrator for the Bureau for Democracy, Conflict, and Humanitarian Assistance at USAID. He's now the international development director of the Feinstein International Center at Tufts. Good to see you. Thanks for being here. Let me start with you too. Do you have family and friends there? I know. Have you been in touch and what yeah. do you hear? Yeah, yeah. I was born on the island and I have, I have about uh, 40 immediate family members and plenty of friends. And it's funny. I'll, I'll give you one. My, my cousin, who's perhaps the most stoic person, he's like my closest, like my oldest brother. Who's there? Who's there. He lives in Dorado, which is, a, which is um, to, the, to the east of uh, uh -huh. uh, near San Juan. Um, he, he texted me finally. Uh, before the storm, he's like, it's coming. It's going to be really bad. And I didn't hear him, f hear f for him for like two days. And then he just told me, it's bad. It's really bad. And I was finding out about how horrible it was Tuesday, like hours after it happened. And so this has been, you know, this has been a very exhausting week for a lot of people. And Representative, you went days and days, from what I understand, without being able to make contact with family members there. Is that, is that correct? Still. Still? Well, who were the people who you've not been able to? Um, uh, a host of cousins, my two aunts, I have two elderly aunts, one that, that's bedridden and another that's living in a very tight, condensed area in the town of Sidra. My other parts of my family are in Arecibo next. How's that feel? Near. It's not that. My mother, you know, my mother's worried sick. She doesn't want to listen to the radio. She doesn't want to watch TV. She's literally, I mean, she was out, you know, banging doors for, for Marty the other day because she didn't want to be in the house. <laughs> That's unbelievable. Can you describe, I mean, we've seen these images and, you know, it's, you sit and you like to think you have empathy, but when you don't really know what it's like on the ground, what is it like on the ground? We hear hospitals don't have yeah. running water, supplies are dwindling, power outages all over <clears> the place. What do you know that we may not well, I think, you know, the key thing here is their communication. Mm -hmm. So if you cannot communicate and the destruction is that widespread, the difficulty is how do you raise your coordination level? How do you... I mean, how who, do people who, like you do yeah, that, you mean? That's yes. right. I mean, if we send a team, if we, when we would do international, we send we come with our own communications gear. My, the one thing that strikes me about this is that we saw what happened with Irma and we saw the intensity of that storm. And Maria was equally as intense, if not more so. 
And, so, and it's a direct hit. It was, and it's it, a direct it hit. It was going to be a direct and hit. And so you have to start preparing ahead of time. You don't wait until right. after it goes through. You, if you have to load ships, you load ships. Right. If you have to load airplanes, you load airplanes with basic supplies, and you get ready to do go. Do we do any of those things? It uh, doesn't look like no. we did at this juncture. No. You know, I, 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 as an outsider here, when I try to reflect on whether, Julio, whether we're, we're doing things in timely fashion, when I heard Hillary Clinton say, I think sarcastically yesterday, I'm not even sure that President Trump knows that these people are American citizens. Yeah. And then I see the poll, yeah. which I'm sure you saw, where yeah. roughly half of America does not know that they are American. Is it one of the, it's those people? Kind yeah, of and, and, and I'll be honest with you, I'm kind of getting sick and tired of hearing the whole fact that Puerto Ricans are American citizens in 2017, which I, I always think like in the age of the internet, it's like you can just Google it and it takes you like two seconds. Well, obviously but you're right. half the people yeah, are right. Googling But that's it, the they? problem. The perception is they're American citizens. But here's the problem with all that. I think we're focusing too much on that, and, 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 and what, you know, uh, the representative mentioned Sidra, the town of Sidra. Mm. Those are towns, the Secretary of State of Puerto Rico today admitted on national television that there are still parts of this island a week later that we have no communication with. People in San Governor Juan... Governor of Puerto Rico says yeah, two days ago you yeah, couldn't get in touch with People in San Juan could have walked put, he from He put out a notification, yeah. 52 mayors, nine responded. Right, nine responded. 43 out of 52 mayors did not respond to the Governor of right. Puerto Rico. Yeah, do you think, I mean, you, I think you were nodding. Maybe Julio is sick of this. I'm not sick of this yet because it seems to me that in part our leaders respond when there's pressure from below. And I don't feel the pressure from below because 50% of our fellow citizens don't think they're our fellow citizens. You know what? Yes, but at the same time, the outpouring this week has been yeah, incredible. That's true. This week from has whom? been real people. You're from, talking? I'm, I'm talking. It didn't. It doesn't matter if you have an accent over your A. I mean, there were. I've heard people from all over the state saying, "Jeff, how do I help out? What do I do?" And that's where our challenge lies because everybody's first instinct is to say, "Okay, we're going to get bottle and baby food and diapers." And what everybody's telling us is, "Slow down, raise money for the nonprofits that are making a difference on the ground." And then when the when the opportunities come, then, then yeah, is that the right order? Is that the right cash. answer? If you're gonna do, if you're gonna donate in a big disaster, you do cash because the more stuff you try to collect, you're just jamming up your airport. You know, right now people are trying to get out, but the one thing the military has done is take over most of the airport. Why? Because you want to flow in your your flights. And to get to your point on communications, so who is coordinating? That's what you want to know. Who is in charge, and what is their priority? And it seems to me if you can't contact most of your mayors, right. then what you want to be doing is you want to flow in communications gear. Satellite phones are the easiest thing to right. do. You just train people and you can begin to communicate. Without that, I, like today on the news, they're drop, oh, we're dropping things in the village. Well, okay, how are you coordinating that? Who gets it? Right. Who's how do there? you know it's And do we even know if people how are still distributed? alive? That's right. That's when a big question. People, but when you hear people uh, who are critical of the president, either in general or critical in this instance, saying this is going to be Donald Trump's Katrina, do you yes. nod in agreement yeah. with that? Or what do you, what's your response to that? Uh, I think I'll say this. I actually worked on Katrina. It's the only domestic disaster I worked on. But the point in Katrina was after we created the Department of Homeland Security, we kind of downgraded FEMA. I think FEMA is in a much mm -hmm. better place. But you have to understand now we're beginning to flow in, you know, thousands of troops. The question is, we were just talking about this. OK, they're going to send in a one star. In Haiti, when we had the earthquake in Haiti, we had a three star general, the deputy commander of Southcom. So the question here is, what level of, uh, of leadership do you want to put on And this? we didn't have the Jones Act essentially blocking all the ports. Explain what that means is that essentially yeah. a, from transporting anything from a U.S. port to a U.S. port has to be done by a U.S. ship. Yes. Right. And the president, but actually we have uh, Donald Trump talking about whether or not he'd be willing to lift the Jones Act. Here's Donald Trump. Well, we're thinking about that, but we have a lot of shippers and a lot of people and a lot of uh, people that work in the shipping industry that don't want the Jones Act lifted. And we have a lot of ships out there right now. Should it be lifted? Would it help? We did it for Hawaii and the Virgin Islands. It was done for Texas and Florida yeah. temporarily. Does Here's the thing. It's, you know, people are, this act, which I'm, I can't believe I'm talking about the Jones Act this week. <laughs> you, don't like, talk I'm, I'm, no, you don't want to talk no, about polls? You don't want to talk about I'd rather talk about the Jones Act okay, than where Puerto Ricans are American citizens. This has been since 1918 <laughs> because right. people don't realize this is like, you know, the, the, the robber, the monopolists, the, the capitalists. Like this was to protect shippers during times of war. And that's like 80 years old, and it's such an antiquated mm -hmm. law. Yeah. And and if we're an America, if we're if we're a country that believes in free markets and competition, right. why do we have right. this law? Can I, get, I want to talk to you in your new role as the money guy, uh, one of the money guys. I don't mean that disrespectfully. You are. <laughs> 
That's one of the, I mean, beyond what people like he uh, are doing, are the money guys in Washington from the president's own people on down doing what needs to be? When I heard the president talk the other day in his first tweet about this, about the colossal debt, what does that have to do in a crisis with that's what, Puerto Rico? And that's what everybody brings up. Just help us. Help us. Well, is the government, the forget the real people the, that you run into that you talked about a minute ago, a representative. Right. Are, is, the gov is, our, you know, is our government, the United States government, Puerto Rico's United States government, are we doing what we need to be doing oh, to help the people of Puerto Rico? No, absolutely not. Okay, there's, 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 there's well, let me be, just finish there, There's got to be more. There's got to be more. Again, is it money we're response, talking about? It's money. It's, sta it's, it's, stabilize, it's stabilizing. The, it's getting people out of their homes it, okay. faster. Faster. I mean, there's with, with the rate of the problem it is not the I'm sorry the rate of the help isn't isn't equal to the magnitude of the problem and right now again I've heard in, in, in towns like Guam that there's still people on their roofs yeah a week but later that's a week week with this right there? now no, I, think, I think it's a couple things one you know that many of the houses were devastated so when you're beginning to plan what you're thinking of is okay what kind of temporary shelter are we going to give to people and then you're thinking what's it going to cost afterwards and Something of this magnitude needs a supplemental. Congress, it's become an evil word on the Hill, but the fact is that there's no other way to pay for this other than to do a supplemental. So any major disaster, any major one, always has that. Now. And I'd like to say, even though he doesn't want to hear it, they're American citizens. <laughs> I mean, well, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's good, to see, good to see you, Jim. Representative, thanks so much for your time. <laughs> you. Pleasure to meet you. Thank, Thank you, all three.